Greetings everyone, I'm Daniel with Hex Crafting, and today we're going to be going through the process of taking our blank hex tiles that we have created previously, these being made from half inch thick XPS foam, like you get at the big box store, uh, and we're going to be converting them into tiles for Battletech, specifically hex tiles with plains or grasslands. As you can see here, we have uh, uh, tiles that ha I have um, gotten a little bit of sort of mud looking texture along with a couple of bit of tones of grass and I've also lined out the the edges. Uh, it's not perfect, uh, especially for the one on the right, but it does the job, which is the important thing here, and it is much more interesting to look at, in my opinion, than just a, a blank, here's green, this is your grasslands, or this is your plains. So, let's go ahead and get into the process of designing these, uh, and we'll go from there. We have three steps, ultimately, uh, with some mini steps, to go through. Our first step is to texture the tiles. We're going to add something to the tiles to give us the effect of sort of dirt or something at the bottom after which we can go through and do other stuff later. You can see here, for instance, I've got slightly raised areas uh, that I have otherwise colored. Uh, these are going to be made uh, out of modeling paste. Now you can see here the modeling paste I'm using. This is an inexpensive brand of modeling paste I got on Amazon at like $15 for a full quart, which means it's going to last me forever. And it does dry to a pretty hard consistency. It may not be as good as some of the some of the higher quality brands, but it'll get the job done. And you see it's it's basically an acrylic paste is what we're dealing with here. Acrylic being most of what we do with typical gaming here. So to spread this, we're going to get the most effective spreader in my arsenal, a butter knife. I uh, stole this one from the kitchen a long time back. Uh, it, it, it's flat. It's easy to get a hold of. It's got some ridges on the side in case I need it. And all we are literally doing is scooping some out and spackling it in different random kind of patterns all over the the tile I mean that's it basically um, I, I, I definitely don't want it covering everything and I don't want it to be too uniform sometimes I'll I'll tap it and lift it up to try and get a little little peaks pulling up this does settle a little bit over time which is perfectly fine it's this is there are brands of modeling paste that are definitely heavier uh, and uh, they will give you uh, more uh, higher peaks without settling that sort of thing uh, in this case here I'm just sort of just sort of spreading it on tapping in some some corners that sort of thing so uh, you know make some random shapes and, and patterns. Once this is done, set your tiles aside to dry. Next step is we're going to seal the tiles. So we have some tiles here that are all dried up. You can see where I have taken different um, textures and just stuck them on there. We've got to seal them so that paint will hold to this better and I also want to try and uh, just protect the foam in general. So to do this I'm going to be using uh, the, the good old method that I learned from uh, watching Jeremy at Black Magic Craft which is um, the black bomb. Uh, basically, we're going to be using matte Mod Podge mixed with black paint. Uh, go ahead and throw something on your surface first if you if you care about that. You don't want to get paint uh, all over your your cutting mat, for instance. Throw down a piece of newspaper, or in my case, I've got some uh, some black some brown paper here, uh, uh, butcher's uh, paper or what have you. And uh, this is this is going to protect you from from getting this on there. So one other thing I do want to mention is for holding these, for doing some work holding, my preferred option is uh, push pins. Uh, so holding this up so you can get the edges and the bottom bit and the top and still be able to not have to do this in multiple passes is annoying. So um, 
I found that three push pins per tile is sufficient to allow me to hold on to this uh, while doing other painting and also hold it up so if there's any drips it will drip and not collect on the bottom edges which is can be very important for for later now on to the ceiling itself now as i mentioned i'm using matte modge podge i've got a, a, a glove on here because uh, this gets a little messy uh, and i'm using some very basic cheap black acrylic paint to tenth this uh, just just like that uh, and when you add it enough in there you'll be able to see it is a consistent color this this makes it so your Mod Pod glow goes longer because it's not a cheap uh, cheap product um, it's not expensive but it, it is definitely not as cheap as straight white glue and I actually transfer this into a condiment bottle to make painting on this easier uh, and this is dirt simple uh, take your 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 tile See if I can hold this up to the camera correctly here. Uh, and we're going to do the edges first. And I simply squirt some of this on the edge, like so. Set the bottle down, get my paintbrush, and spread it out. Just like that. I do try and get all of the visible pink foam sections so, it, so it's all covered. This, is, this should add some long-term durability. Um, it's, it's most important, important on the edges there. This is going to be what things are going to bump up against or on the bottom, that sort of thing. And we're going to go ahead and coat the tile in its entirety. To show you on another tile here, uh, what I mean uh, is edges are done. Spray some of this or squirt some of this on the top and uh, just uh, go to town. Get as much of this covered. I'm not worried about getting a consistent coloration uh, color is going to come later the the black does however make it a lot easier to tell what has been covered by the mod podge uh, also note that uh, mod podge is not a pure pva there's some a lot of additional stuff added to it that the manufacturer doesn't tell anyone about it makes it for instance among other things not susceptible to being reactivated by water once you've got all of your tiles coated, set them down to dry, and then we go to the next step. Now that we have our tiles all sealed, as you can see here, uh, you can see what I mean by these ridges sticking up. We need, we need to make these look like earth or stones or something sticking up out of the ground. To do this, we're going to just be basically painting over with some just basic cheap brown paint. Uh, doesn't really matter. I've got some that are, that are thinned out here. I've, uh, I've got some others. Uh, an airbrush works spectacularly for this if you have a working airbrush. I don't, unfortunately, at the moment. Uh, uh, rattle cans should be fine at this point. Now that we have sealed these, you should have a much less to worry about with spraying them down with, with rattle cans. But I have some cheap craft acrylic paint. We're going to paint this brown. I'm mainly worried about painting the rocky areas uh, or what are going to become the rocky areas brown. Um, but uh, a good overall covering to the tile in general will be helpful. Now, looking at another tile, you don't need to be neat. Uh, this is un, um, un uh, diluted paint here. Just getting rid of some built up uh, dry paint, it looks like, in the bottle. And we're just going to be squirting out uh, a good amount uh, and we're just going to be brushing it over the entire model. Depending on how thick the paint is, you might need to do multiple coats. Uh, I found that in the end when I was done with all these tiles, a single coat was perfectly fine for what I needed, especially with the additional steps. We've got two more steps in the painting process. Uh, let's go. Uh, once you've got the brown on, set, set the uh, everything down, give it some time for it to dry. Now, after you've given the tiles time to dry, the next step is to apply a wash. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can apply a wash. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of, couple of different ones here. The main point to a wash is to take um, a dark color and to let it so soak into the recesses to, to highlight or make more visible the various uh, raised sections here. One way you can do this, uh, it's not my preferred way, but it is 
a way is to take some water and dilute some black paint into here. I'm gonna, this is gonna be a straight paint wash. But uh, in this case, take a little bit of black paint, uh, like on the brush there, and swirl it around into some water. You get, you'll get a black wash. You can set up bottles of this stuff here. I, I, you can paint this on there. I don't really like this method of doing it. I've got a preferred method. Let me show you that now. So this is Pledge Floor Care. Um, this is what the old school modelers will know as Future Floor Polish. Uh, future is an old um, formulation of a floor polish that was an acrylic base and um, it was picked up by Johnson and Johnson if I remember correctly and the name has been changed multiple times there's there's pages on the internet where you can find out the current name for this but this is basically an acrylic binding agent I'm gonna go ahead and fill these three wells with some of this and I am going to literally just tap uh, a little bit of paint onto the brush and swirl it into the, I'm going to call it future uh, there because that's what I've always known it as. I'm going to uh, uh, into the floor wax, into the acrylic wash here. This uh, makes a wash, first of all, it's really easy to do. Uh, and the wash itself will seep into the recesses very well without having to add any extra additives. Uh, this stuff is a miracle product truthfully. I even use it for clear coating miniatures instead of using a gloss varnish. Uh, but you can see I'm just going to slop it on and uh, it will seep around the areas that are raised uh, and you can see how it looks like things are um, it gives more definition so it's not just straight brown. It does have a glossy finish. There is that uh, that is kind of unavoidable. Uh, but in the end, you can cover everything in a uh, matte varnish, uh, clear coat of some sort, uh, and you know, you're know you good to go at that point. That'll clear it. Just to show you what I mean from scratch here, we just slop it all over the place. I'm not even being careful about where it's going. This is just, just letting it pull up everywhere. Uh, and this is going to give it some definition. This will take some time to dry, uh, but give it time to dry and then we will uh, go to the last step in painting. So we've given it sufficient time for this to dry and you can see where the wash has made the the stuff stick out uh, what's going to be our rocks and stuff what we're going to do now is we're going to do a dry brush now a dry brush is very simple we're going to use a lighter brown paint for this and uh, effectively you are getting some paint on your brush you are wiping almost all of it off and then you're flicking the brush back and forth uh, this is a golden brown that i'm going to use for this uh, as a contrast to the regular brown. But uh, uh, you're going to flick the, the brush back and forth over the surface to allow a little bit of the paint that has seeped into the bristles that you have otherwise mostly wiped off to, uh, to stick to the uh, tile here. So when I say almost all of it's being uh, wiped off, you can see about, uh, that's kind of where we want it to be there, that, that level of, of uh, stuff of uh, brownness of paint remaining and we're just going to literally just back and forth we're just going to flick it over and this is going to greatly uh, uh, raise out detail this is only for the most part going to stick up on the stuff that is that is sticking up uh, it is going to take the edges of that turn it from a uh, black uh, or brown into a light brown and you can see what I mean at this point by by this. It, uh, this makes me think immediately, uh, if you look in comparison, uh, it is a lot more ground or stony looking. Okay, so we, uh, we're going to do this to all the tiles. Thankfully, dry brushing is mostly dry, so this will be finished very quickly. Next step is we're going to add some scatter to the tiles, and we're otherwise going to finish these tiles. Okay, so we have dry brushed everything. We're going to be applying ground cover to this. I'm going to be using Woodland Scenics Fine Turf, 
uh, and blended turf. Uh, that is a, uh, a couple of different colors here just for variation. Um, and I'm going to be using Mod Podge to stick this down on top of this. Now uh, I use the blended turf for a little bit of variability because it is a uh, more autumn color and I, I end up sprinkling, sprinkling that on a few sections of this and then covering the rest of it in the green. I'm going to grab a little bit of parchment paper here so that I have something to to do this own so I'll be able to much more easily recapture this because otherwise this is extremely wasteful. So let's go ahead and do that here. Now for the glue I'm going to apply with another condiment dispenser. Uh, I find these really convenient for this and I'm just going to be squirting this all over the tile uh, and in this case I'm going to be using a brush. Um, you can do this in a few tiles at a time. Um, I Ultimately, when I get down to it, I'm going to be covering the entire tile because I'm not using doing big board segments. I'm going to cover the entire tile in the Mod Podge and then apply the turf after that. I am using a brush here. Um, I've I've come to uh, to the conclusion ultimately when doing this uh, off camera, just use your finger unless you're kind of disgusted by that. Uh, it is a lot quicker uh, as well. You do want to pay particular attention when applying the glue to one make sure it goes all the way to the edge that is one of the problems that I've that I've run across with some other glues where they wouldn't go to the edge fully uh, and then for certain areas uh, in the center of the rocks uh, we're going to just sprinkle in uh, the the other color uh, so this will stand out later uh, when we put everything else is green uh, and then we're going to cover the rest of it in just straight green uh, you can see here, we're just going to shake it on. Getting that off camera here, but we are literally just going to be covering the entire surface in green, and then we're just going to tip it over and, and, uh, and let the rest of it fall off onto our parchment paper. Just like that. Okay. To show you the rest of this, so we've went ahead and jumped to this part here. I'm putting the rest of the glue on. If you're doing a large, large tile, you probably do want to do this in sections so the glue doesn't have time to dry in between applications. But in this case, uh, I, I do think for these smaller tiles, it's perfectly fine applying the glue to the entire tile and then adding the the, the ground cover after that. I'm going to set the, that aside. I'm going to grab some more of this color uh, and I'm just going to show you here. I'm just going to sprinkle it on various areas to indicate that there's different types of foliage on the ground. Uh, this is representing each, each for Battletech, each square or each hex is 30 meters. So uh, you really, uh, we're really trying to fo focus on that little scale there. And then I'm just going to plow this over top, cover the entire surface, give it a second, turn it over, and there we go. This we have to let set aside for the Mod Podge to dry. Uh, I'd say you may want to give this a full day before you go to the next step, at least a few hours. So you can see in the background that I went ahead and gotten all of this set up. This has actually dried a lot longer, so this is finished drying where the ones in the back are still in the process of drying. That being said, uh, we don't have enough, uh, enough grip, I don't think, yet. So we're going to take an old, uh, an old uh, scenic uh, train modeling approach to this. We're going to apply some scenic glue. So this is a diluted straight PVA like Elmer's. Uh, with uh, some flow aid. This is di diluted about uh, two parts water to one part uh, PVA glue with a little bit of flow aid added to make it spread a little better. Uh, you can use like a drop of dish soap. Uh, the other bottle is straight 91% isopropyl alcohol. This is going to soak this up and make this um, like really wet, I would guess you say here. Uh, we're gonna. I, I usually do this a couple tiles at a time, uh, or uh, if it is a smaller tile, you might go through and spray it down uh, with a with a whole bunch more at, the, at straight up. But then I'm gonna use a dropper, and I'm going to start applying drops of this modeling glue, this PVA. You can see where I didn't get enough uh, 
uh, enough alcohol there why it doesn't soak in like that whereas for the other areas it soaks right in this is going to give you a lot greater grip to the, uh, the to the ground cover for getting this stuck in uh, we're going to go ahead and just you know a couple of uh, uh, a couple of tiles per per squeeze on these little bottles here uh, making sure to get the center there uh, and back to the same thing we're going to add the glue and uh, about six to eight drops per tile is sufficient to get the tile covered. This is important because when you're going to be moving models on top of it, uh, there's a possibility for things to get scraped off. And this is the best that I've been able to come up with myself uh, for, um, for getting this ground cover stuck down so it won't pull off fully. Uh, the... Uh, the guys that have been doing this for decades uh, with the model train community, they they know their stuff. So I think this is a, uh, a good route to go. Now, the final step to this is going to be completely optional. Basically, what I want to do, uh, you can see here how the uh, we got some different coloration uh, on the scatter here. Um, uh, the, what I want to do at this point uh, is three things. Uh, first, we're going to apply some lines. I've got a 0.7 uh, inch or 0.7 what have you uh, paper mate black sharpie marker thing and I'm just going to go around the the edges of the hexes and we're going to do this. You need to wait for this to dry otherwise this will scrape this up uh, but uh, it is usually pretty simple to see where that is at by various defects in the underlying ground cover as you can see in this instance here uh, or whether it be by holes that have popped up um, and so forth. If it's not perfect, I'm not worried about it. Uh, when you're placing mechs on the table, uh, you generally know where it's going to be. And if, if you've got a, a, a line that is not quite as straight as you'd like, since all this is being done freehand, it's not that big of a deal. Once we have done this part on all of the hexes, we're going to go to the next step. So the, the, to the last little bit of cleanup I want to do is we're going to take some our, our regular acrylic paint, straight black. We're going to take a flat brush and uh, we're going to go ahead and clean up the edges. Uh, the edges being what you're going to see most likely here. So uh, literally, I am simply going to open up the cap, dip it in uh, the cap to get some black paint on there, just like that. And we're going to take the tile and... Uh, paint the edges. This is going to darken it up and it's going to clean, make it a much cleaner looking look, especially if you have any drips of like the, the brown paint from earlier. If you are not careful, you can end up painting the edge of the, um, the greenery uh, and, it, and that stuff being basically sawdust will just soak it up. I'm not going to worry about painting the underside because that it's coated. That's good enough for me. But I am going to go ahead and paint the edges on all these. That is real straightforward and will go through really quickly. Uh, once that is painted, uh, the last thing that I typically do, which I don't have on camera, but I'm just going to take a rattle can of matte varnish, in this case some Krylon, and I'm going to coat the entire thing. I'm going to coat the tile in matte varnish. I'm going to coat the edges in matte varnish to give it a little bit of a seal and, and one more thing to help stick this to the top. And that is it. So to give you a look at the finished product here, just to give you some stills of the tiles, you can see this one, for instance. Uh, I've got a number of them that are sitting next to one another. You can see how the ground looks like dirt or stone. Uh, you could do this some other ways as well, I'm certain. I know that I'm going to experiment with this at a later point to show off maybe tracks or footprints. But this is pretty much the entire process. So we're going to go ahead and leave this here. Uh, we're going to, on the next episode, we're going to look at making hills. And the particular way that I do that, that matches this style of ground cover uh, and this style of hexes. If you have any questions, please go ahead and leave them in the comments. I will answer whatever I can. Uh, and I do hope that you have enjoyed and uh, that you come back for future videos. So as always, uh, from Hex Crafting, you have a great day.